with us. Good morning. Thank you very much for being here for this interview. You are a fashion photographer. You've been working for renowned magazines, for major brands and uh, for a, a number of celebrities. You spent a few years in the United States at the beginning of your career. You, you went there as a photography assistant. When you came back in 1995, where had you this ambition to become a, a fashion photographer already? No, not really. You know, I was, I was young, I was very naive, you know, but I mean, I have to say I'm still kind of naive. I'm just very driven by working, you know, and um, Unfortunately, right now, the dynamic a little bit changed, but back in the day, fashion was just a very interesting way of, you know, inventing pictures. And as long as the people were dressed in the, with a particular brand, these people were paying a production, sometimes even you, you know? So I think the, the idea of just being able to work, you know, and somebody gives you a model and, and they give you some clothes and the rest of it is fairly free, you know? And it was a lot more free when I started than it is today. Mm -hmm. It just seems to be a, a great opportunity to um, just to tell stories, you know, because um, if you look at my photographs, they're very theatrical. They're very, mm -hmm. people say cinematic, but they really my stories, you know, that's really what interests me. You know, it's, it's just really a reflection of, of everything you pick up. And back in the day, at least, fashion used to be a, an interesting way of, of, of doing that because it, le it left you a lot of space, you know? Yeah, yeah I just want to, I wanted to, to ask you about that. How do you work with your models? Because as you said, it's, it's staged. It's always staged. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you work with them? What is the process? And, and what do you try to capture from them? Well, you know, it's, well, I think there is a larger question because I think in that sense, um, the interesting part in, 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 in any type of photographs, even in your photographs or the one from your neighbor, is that there is, that, that you, they, you picture speaking to others, but they're also speaking to yourself. And what's on the picture is talking to you. There is some sort of process that, you, that you're communicating with. There's something, I, I think we could say there's something unresolved that keeps you trying to figure out a picture is always a question and it's a mystery to yourself so what's in that picture i think if you you know if you turn it around there's something you're missing there's something you're trying to figure out as much as the people on the picture you know so if you look at that process in photography there is something you don't have and you try to understand i think that's driving almost every artist you know and within that constant process of having something that is not there, you have to kind of ask yourself, you find out more or less, the things you're missing inside of yourself are the things you're creating in your photographs. You know, I think in generally photography, um, you know, photography is always a bit nostalgic because it's always the past. And I think a good definition of nostalgia is for example, if you say, um, I'm missing the things I've never had. And, and that is a lot to do with photography. I'm photographing the things that I'm losing or that I wish I had. And maybe, you know, to go back to your question, it's a little bit, the people or the models in my pictures, I changed them into what I want to do with them. And I always paid attention to shooting people you already know in some different ways. And then I put them in my scenario, you know, like, like Alfred Hitchcock is using Grace Kelly in his way, or, or you know, what, you know, if you if you look at, uh, for example, um, if you look at Woody Allen, you know, uh, the people in Woody Allen's movies, they always talk a bit like um, Woody Allen, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think it, it's always interesting if you're, uh, um, it's always interesting if you if you see how an artist is is using all these different characters, but in the end, they're all becoming him, you know? Mm -hmm. So you plan everything, you, you decide what props they should, uh, they should have, uh, you, you- Everything, the, everything, every detail is from me. Everything is from you. Yeah, and that's the interesting part, to go back to your first question, that's the interesting part about fashion, 
Because once they use you, especially in the process where I was working on, the story itself was a lot based on personal innovation. For example, I started with a British magazine in the early 2000s that called The Face. And when you work for The Face, a little bit different than today, different than maybe Vogue magazine back then, it was not a magazine that asked you, so how famous are you and who are you already worked with? It just said like, so what can you do that we don't have? What can you give us that we don't have already? So it was a lot about innovation and, and it was very conceptual. So as a photographer, you were forced to give them something or to come up with something that was original, which is, like I said, that, which is definitely something I'm missing in a lot of processes today in photography. And these people really pushed you and, and that story, you know, the, the most original story in photography or in any artistic expression is yourself, you know, because nobody's like you. That's the incredible miracle about life is that we're all different, you know. So the more you're looking at yourself, the more you find something in yourself that's original, you know. And I think in, in most artistic expression and definitely also in photography, somehow you start to define a particular emotion that is that is running through your pictures and once you identify that emotion you know you can you can focus on it you can develop it and then the second step would be finding out where it comes from you know so a photograph is a very self-analytical process mm -hmm. yeah sure i am um, next to your your fashion projects you also have some personal ones and mm -hmm. uh, i have been looking at the at your book the book you published for with your selected works and mm -hmm. i was very struck by the very last photograph which is a still mm -hmm. life and uh, oh, the, the, the the scroll, yeah. with, the, with the skull and mm -hmm. two books i couldn't read the titles and, and the broken mirror and mm -hmm. to have it at the very end of the book it, it appeared like a kind of warning and uh, could you tell me something about this photograph well like I said, I think, you know, look, there's two parts. Somehow you, in, in a photograph, you're translating instinct and intuition into, um, into craft and, and material. Suddenly there's something there. In a photograph, it happens so quick that we're hardly aware really of what we're doing. And that is the really interesting process about if you're painting, if you're writing a symphony, if you're writing a book, the, the self-revelation is so complex and you have to search. But in a photograph, it's so intuitive. And, and I would say that most people do not know what they're doing when, you know, that picture you're talking about, it was probably taking with 125th of a second, you know? And actually it was taking on a photo shoot I've done with Emma Watson. Mm -hmm. And it was just standing there. There were different things, you know? I wanted to do this kind of Hamlet shot with Emma, so I had the skull. And it's actually a real skull. It's not a fake prop. And, and it was just, you know, it was just laying there while, and, and I think while they, she got dressed into another outfit, I saw that picture and I only did like one or two frames of it, you know, but it, you know, it's true. There's something there um, because what it is, um, if you photograph somebody, you, you rest on the surface and you think about just like the skull, what's below the surface, um, you know, what, what is behind all these perfect looking people I'm taking mm -hmm. pictures of, you know, what is like, there's just skin, there's just bones. It's a very strange thought, you know, that one day, I don't want to sound morbid, but one day me and Emma, we're going to look like that, you know, and on, if you're on a photo shoot and there's all that glamour, but what's below all that. And like I said, um, a, a photograph in that sense, I wanted to reveal a little bit what's below and, and again, in that really quick moment, you reveal a lot of yourself. Maybe don't reveal that this is just a bone, but you reveal what's inside your spirit. And, you know, it tells you a lot about who you are, even the pictures you are taking or the people taking who are listening to us right now. More or less, there is a selection that talks to them. And like I said, behind that selection of what you photograph, how you photograph it, if you think that's beautiful, there is a longing there is a desire, there is a deficit, there's something you're missing, you know, and you try to cope with that. You try to regain it through, through that process. And I'm obviously photographing or creating a certain world that, like I said, there's a, 
I would call it my, my pictures, I would call them partly sentimental. But if you go back to what we just said, if you say nostalgia is missing the things that you never had, you could say being sentimental is missing those feelings you can't have. And I think um, there's, there's always in all of us, there's feelings we lo we're looking for, we're missing. And um, you know, I'm, I'm always suffering with my work because I think it is very, it's quite romantic, it's sentimental. Sometimes I want to do harder. I want to be more angry in my pictures. You know, I want to be more cool. But um, it's, just not, it's just not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a world that is definitely kind of, um, it's kind of removed, you know, but it's my world. And I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm learning about myself when I have an exhibition or when I have a virtual show, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, why do I take those pictures? You know, why these ones? Why do I think this is beautiful? But it's the same thing for the viewers, you know, you, they're connecting with something or they don't. But even if you don't connect with something, it's interesting if you're rejecting something. So I think in any artistic process, there is um, there's attraction and repulsion, you know? You can have a repulsive feeling about them. Some people have a repulsive feeling about beauty. A lot of people look at my pictures, not a lot, but I have frequent comments. They say, why is everything on your pictures beautiful? Why do you always shoot beautiful things, you know? And you see they have a repulsive attitude towards perfection and beauty. Now that maybe, without overanalyzing it, but that maybe because they don't feel comfortable with it. They don't feel, it's not, these are partly beautiful people or, you know, they might have a beautiful life, but they don't, they don't connect with it. Maybe there's something there that it makes them, um, it makes them, it puts them in conflict with beauty, mm -hmm. you know? So because it's a certain sense of perfection, maybe they don't feel perfect, you know? But you know what, where I'm trying to get at? There is such a dialogue between you and those emotions, artworks are evoking in you. Mm -hmm. And that dialogue is really what you have to, um, that's the best thing a photograph can do. It's, mm -hmm. it's not what's on the picture. That's not, that doesn't matter. What's, the picture can only guide you to a place. And, and that place, you might have not been without that picture. But what you're experiencing in that place, it's yours. It's yeah. not me. You know, if you take somebody to a place you really love, you take somebody to a restaurant at the beach, you can take him there. But how he's feeling when he's there, you cannot tell him. You say, oh my God, look at the sea, it's so beautiful. And the person might just be like, you know what? I think it's a little cold here. You know, do they, can we close the door? You're like, are you crazy? We're at the sea, you know, the wind, everything. Um, it, yeah. A photograph defines your relationship to, to, to your world. That's true. We always connect to something that is deep into us, actually. And so the, the, the understanding and the resonance of the photograph into us will be different depending on what we experience, what the moods we are in, and, and, and for sure. Exactly. And resonance, I think, it's an incredibly important word. You know, what do we resonate with, you know? And I think often, um, you know, a photograph or an artwork could be, you know, very self-confident, like an opinion. You know, you, you meet somebody and he has this great opinion about everything. And it's, but he puts it on the table and it's solid. It's not, it's not changing. Resonance means that there is an exchange. You know, there's, that it's not finished. A good photograph, a good artwork is not telling you what to think. It's just suggesting things, just like a good opinion, a good conversation between two people is not an exchange of two opinions. It's like, it's not you play your music and then the other instrument plays his music. It's, it's, it's a dialectual process. Both, both instruments make one melody. And if you want to, as you say, and I really love that word, if you want to resonate with people who look at your photograph, you need to you need to touch something in them and they can complete it. If the artwork or the photograph in itself, and a lot of photographers do that because if the picture is too perfect or too technical, you look at it, you may be overwhelmed. You maybe think it's great, but it's not you. It's not really touching you. It's like you, you're walking out of an amazing movie with 50 superheroes and everything was technically impressive, but it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really touch you, you know? 
You're impressed, but you're not moved. You're not changed. So you, you try to find a good balance between perfection and imperfection. Is it something that you... Yeah, because you, you suffer with imperfection and your insecurities. You want it to be perfect. Just like when you have an opinion, when you talk to somebody, you want your opinion to be balanced and researched and, and, and you know. But in the end, like I said, the interesting part, and it has a lot to do with our culture today, the more perfect something is, the less it lets other people in. Because maybe we have this, this security that it's in itself, it's closed up but it's not penetratable, there, it's not permeable. You know, there's no exchange. And what we're looking for is really the exchange. It's not about a perfect opinion, you know? It's like, I think maybe plastic is a great term. You know, we're inventing plastic and it's great because it keeps the water out, you know, and, and, and you know, the wind out and the temperature out, but nothing goes through. But in the end, we're not interacting anymore with our environment if we live in a plastic house or if we're wearing a plastic suit, you know? But it's a very protective material, you know? Does it make sense? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. That, Don't have your opinion, you know? So artwork shouldn't be like plastic, you know? <laughs> there shouldn't be a straight border. No, I mean, it has to be permeating, actually, yeah. so that there's an exchange. And so is it through, for example, the, the grain of your photograph, the materiality of your photograph that you try to, to let them be so, so that there's this exchange that, that happens between the, the, the on-viewer and the photograph. So is it your, do you work with your, do you use your technique, light, the green of the photograph to make it resonating with the on-viewer as well? Yes, because, you know, look, what do I shoot? I shoot models and celebrities, you know? But models and celebrities, they don't really exist. They're just completing our own imagination, just like what I said before. They are um, personalized deficits of, of, of our personality. Any hero in history is something that we're longing for, that we want to be. Any model is just a benchmark of something that we hope we could be. You know, you're inventing something to people that's more or less in certain ways living a life that these people think they can't live. They don't live it themselves. You know, you know, there's a beautiful story um, to explain you what I'm doing. There was a woman going to Sophia Lauren, you know, uh, in a restaurant. And she says, you know, I admire you so much. I always wanted to be like Sophia Lauren, you know. And Sophia Lauren says, you know what, me too. You know, and I think <laughs> no, <laughs> that's they're not it's not them, you know, they just they just acting and they the more the better they do it. They're acting out things that you wish you would have. And in my pictures, these people, I'm trying to connect these people with your own longing, with your own desires, with mine, mm -hmm. with being something that maybe you wish you could be, maybe something you wish you could live, you know? Mm -hmm. And like this, you're connecting to people's own stories. Yeah. You know, I'm not telling them this is mm -hmm. um, Scarlett Johansson. I'm saying this is, this is your, this is something that you wish you would be, you know, and it gave it Scarlet's face. And you think like this, your life would be more interesting or more complete or have less pain or whatever it is, you know, but celebrities in that sense, you know, we're looking at ourselves. We're looking at what we want to be, you know, and that's why it's an interesting subject to work with. Mm -hmm, sure. Yeah. And so are you constantly trying to, to challenge your, yourself and your artistic practice, your photographic practice? Yeah, and it hurts because, I mean, you're clearly failing a lot, you know, because you're trying something else, you find some things that work, and then, you, then their question is, do I do a lot of what works? You know, do I always keep selling people the same cake because it tastes well? Or do I try to do something else? And then people say, oh, I preferred your cake. But it's true, yes, you, you have to... Um, you definitely have to try different things, you know. I just, you know, especially right now, I mean, you know, it, with COVID, it was interesting because I started shooting animals and flowers, but, you know, you just keep doing things, you know. So this was something new for you to shoot flowers and animals in, in regard to portraits and, and people that you usually portray. Yeah, and you try to connect with people in the same abstract sense, you know, and uh, um, 
you know, I always admired people, their, their vision was so complete that anything they work with, anything they shoot, any place they go, they make it their own, you know, because it, their vision is so strong. I, and they don't need so much. If you look, for example, take a, a, you know, you take a picture of Helmut Newton and there's always, uh, there's not a lot of lighting, there's not a lot of technique going on, but he managed to force people into some, you know, almost sexual discomfort in a certain way and relationship that, you know, it becomes his picture. You know, they're always very forced, very pushed. You know, there's something almost violent in the way he, 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 he defines them in, their, uh, in, in his universe, you know. But I do think, and in the end, look, uh, there's pictures from him where he shoots, um, you know, boats in the, po the port of uh, Monaco. But you, you, you see there is a darkness and, the, uh, and attention to it. You know, Sarah Moon is one of these photographers. Mm -hmm. I think David Lynch has these movies, you know. You can feel that their their world is behind it you know and, and mm -hmm. it's true I try, you know i i like that mm -hmm. i mean in 2019 you had a retrospective in stockholm from your work mm -hmm. it was it was your first so your, your first retrospective and was it I'm only 50, yeah. no, is it? <laughs> at least i had one before i'm dead I, yeah, I did, yeah. yeah and was it was it a, a milestone in your in your career as a, as a photographer or how do we feel when we when we have a retrospective our first retrospective that opens did you ever see that movie uh, basquiat from julian schnabel i haven't not. i have okay there's a beautiful <laughs> scene of basquiat um there's a scene of basquiat at his first sh big show in new york city and and i think uh, schnabel found an interesting way of of showing how how you feel because he was there and there were all these people and and the way he did it is that suddenly all these people stopped moving they were freezed you know and Basquiat was walking very alone between those people you know and then he left and it's true if you do that um you feel very alone you know because you feel you're really looking at your life and you you're thinking you know that does this make sense you're trying so hard like I said there is such a um, there's such a deep desire to communicate something that you're longing for with other people. And you think when you share it with people, maybe it hurts less because there's that, I think every artist is driven by a sense of pain and, and whatever artwork he's doing is somehow, um, it, it's, it's kind of an aspirin, but it, you know, like in that sense, an exhibition is kind of an operation, <laughs> you know, you hope the pain will get better afterwards. And you always feel that it's, it's, you know, you can't really share what you have inside to that level that you're going to say, everybody understands me now. I don't think anybody will have that. But the attempt is always there. And that's where also the frustration is there. So, um, yes, Stockholm and, you know, uh, was a beautiful experience, a big space, incredible museum for photography. But, you know, you always think, do, do they understand me? You know, do you hear me? You know, so it's a very strange experience. You know, it's very intense. Thank you very much for the, for the interview. And thank you for having me. Thank you. I hope it makes sense what I'm telling you. you know?